So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Cora. Uh, we're glad to have you here. So my name is Sergio, and I come from Portugal. Uh, and today I'm here uh, to talk you, to talk to you a little bit more about virtual reality, and I'm going to ask you to challenge your own reality. And um, so, what I mean, for, so our our main um, agenda for today, it's actually going to be like we're, we're starting with an overview from Cor uh, on Cora. Then I'm going to tell you how to think about VR. Because m many of you uh, who have not tried it, it can be kind of hard to grasp what virtual reality actually is. So we'll, uh, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about that. We'll go briefly on the story about VR and we'll do like a sort of a hardware overview and a software overview. And then I'll just tell you like how VR is not only made for gaming and we'll just do a general wrap up. So, First of all, um, Quorum was defined by Plato as a space between uh, being and non-being. So we thought that that was a pretty cool name for a virtual reality <laughs> store. And uh, so that's, that's actually like where, where we actually perform it's, uh, and operate. It's between the physical space and the virtual space. And this is us. We are the bridge. And we started off with uh, with a store, which is this place that you guys can see here, uh, where we do some demos of uh, virtual reality and we introduce people to virtual reality for the first time. And, um, and we also have some schools here where we teach the kids uh, from uh, seventh uh, grade onwards uh, what virtual reality can do for them and can uh, can actually enhance like their uh, their uh, parents jobs and we also work a little bit with the community so we do some community events and uh just like today you guys are are all here and uh we actually help uh we want to integrate like virtual reality into the people's uh lives as well a little bit so for example this was a concert uh that that was given right there with, and people were while while these players were uh, were playing some violin, uh, people in the um, in the show they were in the audience they were just like uh, watching it, some videos in virtual reality as well. It's a pretty cool experiment as well. And um, but we are also um, virtual reality consultancy company, and we produce virtual reality content. Uh, and we operate in all of these areas that are here, art, architecture, education, games, marketing, healthcare, and VR commerce. And we'll go through them all uh, as we get along. So more on that later. Now, how to think about VR. Um, so as I told you, it's pretty hard to explain to someone what VR is if they have not experienced it. So I'm going to start off with two scenarios. So in the first one, I want to take you to my hometown. This is Rumariz in Portugal. Uh, it's a pretty rural area. And I was born lucky enough to, um, to have some parents that they made me uh, travel. And they had the means to do it. They, they enforced, me, uh, enforced me, encouraged me to do so. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, so thank you, mom and dad. Um, but the truth is that many people from that village, they live in that own village. That's their bubble. And that's all there is for them. Like many people have not been outside of the, of the village, or out of the country that much. So that's basically it. That's basically what they know. And most of the times they, it's, they just settle for that. And, um, and it's good. I mean, it's, it's normal. But I mean, imagine that you have a device that can actually transport you to have dinner with a Mongolian family or to just go visit a nuclear phys uh, physics lab or just explore a little bit of how was the times in the Cretaceous uh, among the dinosaurs. Or just 
how's life on Mars? Um, so, I mean, it's safe to say that it's not only David Bowie that has this sort of questions. So, um, I mean, people should be challenged to think about other realities and what is there more than, than their own boundaries. So, and this is exactly like what, what this device <laughs> enables, to transport people to other places, other places that can, uh, cannot be reached. The other story that I want to talk, uh, talk to you about, it's a little bit about uh, in, 1980, uh, in 1895, the Lumiere brothers first screened this video of a train arriving at the La Ciotat station, train station. And uh, this, the myth goes that a lot of people freaked out in the cinema because that was the first time that they were seeing like uh, moving pictures. So they thought that this is actually like something real, that the, the train was coming at them. So the thing, uh, they, they actually thought that, yeah, they, they started panicking and they left, uh, they left the cinemas. That's how the myth goes. Now fast forward to 2015. This is evolution of verse. I mean, even though that we know that it's not um, that, that it's not real. That it, I mean, of course, it, we know that the train is not going to hit us like this. Somehow, like our senses are <coughs> fooled into thinking that the train is actually coming towards us, and we cannot help to flinch a little bit. So our senses are stimulated in a way that. Uh, our body creates some sort of arousal to it, and it's, it's sort of involuntary, but it's powerful. So that's another thing, like, it's the power of empathy. And to best describe virtual reality is that it puts you right in the center of, uh, of the action, and it's an empathy machine that deals with a lot of emotion and just makes you tele teletransport to any other place that you can imagine. But virtual reality, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And um, the truth is that um, Dale's, uh, this, is, this is a picture of uh, Dale's cone of experience. Uh, virtual reality has the ability to actually uh, improve learning in, in about 90%. So when people, the idea of this is that when people simulate the activity, they retain 90% of the information. Whereas, for example, when they're just watching moving pictures, like a video or something, they just retain 40%, or when they are reading, they just retain 10%. So there's a lot of potential also in, uh, in terms of education, for example. More on that later. But now, virtual reality is not something new. Like, and in fact, it goes back way to the 60s with the first sensorama, which was like a big ass ma machine that just, uh, they, it had wind and it fooled your senses like uh, taste and, uh, and the aromas were coming in. I mean, the first, this first screening was actually like a guy sitting in a, mo a mo you were sitting in a motorcycle and you were uh, riding through New York, the streets of New York. So, that was that was pretty pretty cool, but then a little bit later, like uh, they started to develop these sort of weird big uh, headsets, uh, head-mounted displays. So um, I mean, the technology started to go a little bit further. I mean, it's still not ideal, right? In the 80s and in the 90s, there was actually a revolution, where the first virtual reality product, the Virtual Boy came out and it generated a lot of hype. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see it here, but this is like a, some graphics of, uh, of the Virtual Boy uh, playing Wario Land. Um, it's pretty archaic, but yeah. Um, but at the time, like people thought that this is, this is super, this, this was the edge. Like this is going to be the big next thing. And, um, and yeah, a lot of PR, um, PR was made around uh, virtual reality, but the problem is that it didn't live up to its expectation. Like it didn't move past the early, uh, uh, early, early adopters. So that's why it failed, because the technology was not ready yet. 
Now, today... Oh, sorry, perhaps... Here it comes again. Death. Yeah. Okay, either ways. But today, we have like these sort of uh, graphics that are just incredible. And I mean, compare this to, to Wario Land, right? Like, it's a huge evolution. Um, so, what has changed, it's, it's actually like the hardware. So, do you remember the first HMD that I showed you? So, that was way, that was way too big for us. Right now, we can just simply plug in a phone and we're good to go. And the head mounted display just like this, I'm sorry. Just like this. The, and, um, and we also have, for example, um, more uh, seated uh, experiences uh, where you can actually just like, be, um, that it can also track the position of, the, of your head and move along like, uh, while, while you move your head, for example, like this, the, uh, the picture in the, um, in the screen also moves along with it. So, and for, but we can also have like the, um, the extreme out of it, which is the HTC Vive, for example, uh, where you can just be walking in the real world and at the same time you'll be walking in the virtual world. So because of, the, of some sensors uh, that it can sense your, um, your position, the position of the goggles and the, the, um, and the controllers. So, and you can also interact with the, with the virtual world. So this, we can notice that there, the, the difference, the, the evolution has been big in terms of hardware. But what about software? So today we have like 360 degree video, which can be 3D and 2D, and you can interact with it. Or you can also have 360 degree pictures. And you can also have 3D interactive environments, which are basically uh, computer rendered environments and uh, that can, um, yeah, that can simulate wherever you want, but basically like rendered in the, in the computer. It needs su uh, high, high end computer graphics, but it, um, it works. And also, uh, this is the void. This is a new type of, uh, this is a different, a different sort of level, I would say. They call this hyper-reality. Uh, basically, if you can see right here, like they have these sort of environments, enclosed environments that they are, um, they are physical spaces that they have built, but they've also built um, virtual worlds on top of those physical environments. So the idea is, uh, yeah, with uh, people, they are, uh, they are geared with these headsets and these suits. And basically, this is what they see. So it's pretty cool, the way that the technology has advanced. For example, yeah, he can tap here, but he's also interacting with the virtual world. So I think that we are witnessing something, a revolution here. But it's not only like high-end, Revolution. I mean, this is not something that only a few can achieve. Like, with the release of, of virtual reality cameras, of, of uh, 360 degree cameras, people will be able to produce content. And uh, the ability to produce content will be in everyone's pockets as well. And to also see the content itself. Because, as I showed you, you, can only, ha you, you only need, for example, a Google Cardboard to just play some virtual reality content. Moreover, <laughs> you also have like an increased uh, usage of smartphones and the traffic on, the, um, uh, on, on them, on the traffic usage, which will basically um, mean that people will be more, uh, that the technology will be more ready to actually um, sustain like the consumer market. So we're pretty confident that this, this will indeed be, able, uh, be, be reached to everyone, be in reach of everyone. So now let me talk, you, talk to you a little bit more about like how can virtual reality be 
used for uh, in general. So these are five areas that uh, virtual reality can be used for. So we can have a visualization uh, of a 3D model, for example. Um, you can also have you can have some physical experiences like the, like the one that, that I showed you with the with the void, with the hyper reality. We can also the, this can also be seen to just watch a concert or watch a sports event. It can also be uh, used for education and uh, and simulation of uh, of tasks, and it can also be used for VR commerce. Uh, so, which is basically like it it will enhance a lot the the shopping experience of the users because it will not only be able to uh, the users will not only be able to just have a regular shopping experience. They can also, for example, when a kid goes into the bookstore, they can just open up a book, choose a book, and then like a dragon comes flying around and uh, and just do and just flies around at him. And I don't know. It can enhance a lot the and and help the to make the experience a lot more magical as well. So, in architecture, um, so this is this is what what has already been uh, been doing, been done. Um, you can basically recreate um, 3D sketch, uh, sketches, architectural sketches, where you can just uh, alter some sorts of uh, some um, some aspects of it. For example, the colors, or uh, or the place where where it's at, or for example, change the um, the piece of furniture that you want. So this is this is great for architects to see like. Uh, what their ideas can actually be, um, how how actually they are, like what is it, what is it like to be inside of my idea, of the thing that they idealized. So um, this is this is clearly uh, a huge advantage, for example, in construction as well, like when with things that have not, uh, where where people have to sell. Sell, uh, sell buildings that they actually have not constructed yet or have not seen yet. So, yeah. We also have, for example, in e-commerce, IKEA just launched, for example, um, a, an HTC Vive experience where people can step inside of uh, a modeled kitchen and just switch around. A little bit more, uh, just like uh, in the architecture, um, video that I showed you, but um, but with this is more for commercial purposes, and we are predicting that in the future you will also be able to start selling right uh, right from uh, sorry, be able to start buying while you are at the at the app. So um, next, yeah, this can also be used for marketing purposes. For example, uh, th uh, we did a video for FCK, and um, where we actually showed like different angles of a stadium during a Brown B match. So for people that have never experienced like what is it like to be in a stadium uh, and just watch a regular match, or for example, how is it to to be in front of all those hooligans and those really hardcore supporters, like they had a chance. They had a chance to, to see it, how it's like, and uh, and they had to, the opportunity to see their players right right in front of them. Like, how big are they? How small are they? Like, so and what what type of shoes they are uh, there are they wearing? Like, perhaps in the in the television I cannot see that clearly. So, why not? So, and I mean a lot of a, a lot of things have been ha uh, have been going on in marketing, and. I think that Facebook is actually on the forefront of uh, revolutionizing this. Yeah, this is what um, what Facebook is doing. Basically, like they um, they have just developed this app where they can actually interact with uh, with another person, with another user in real time. 
it's, it's kind of insane. So for example, they have these spheres over here, and basically they'll just put them. Yeah. This is a 360 photo, and basically you'll just put in his head. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I mean, this will, of course, eventually revolutionize a lot the way that um, the way people socialize and social networks like. Uh, just wanted to push a little bit forward. Either ways. And then like uh, there's actually like an, a really nice uh, part where they take a selfie afterwards. I just wanted to show you that. So it's that, that, that's pretty cool. So you can also be anywhere with anyone else. Healthcare uh, is actually like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is a company that, uh, that also enables you to be inside of an operations room. So you can also be teaching med school, uh, med, uh, med schools, uh, med students, uh, to um, what, what actually goes on in an operations room without all the crowd uh, around them. So um, it, it, it enables like anywhere, uh, anyone from anywhere to just step inside there and just learn more, much more easier and much more effectively like how things are, are, are done, how complicated and, and time pressuring things can be done. So it's also another step. Here at Cora, we're working also a little bit um, in, in this sector, but more regarding, uh, regarding for example, uh, phobias and anorexia and, um, and uh, oh. I'm just forgetting, the, I'm lacking the word. Uh, this Either ways. <laughs> um, and bulimia, sorry. Yeah, anorexia, bulimia, and phobias. So basically it can just, um, remember when I told you that virtual reality can fool your senses? So this is actually like um, in a closed environment, in a safe space, you can perform. You can put. Uh, you can put people uh, in in those realities that they would, and those sort of yeah, and in, in their realities that they want, they don't want to be confronted with, and uh, and they that they have problems with. So this can be actually pretty uh, pretty insightful and something pretty powerful for uh, for therapists to actually be able to, to cure these sort of diseases because, for example, um, there's this thing called, for example, the rubber hand experiment where you have like your hand here, you have a stall here, and then you have uh, where you cannot see your hand, but at the same time you put like a prosthetic rubber hand right, right next to it. I mean, at the same time, like the the therapist is just like um, touching bo uh, both your rubber hand and your other hand, like in the same places, and the movement is constant. But then, like, it's it's so funny, like how, uh, for example, uh, if if the therapist like gets a chopping knife and then just chops the the hand off, like the rubber hand off. You'll actually be, be feel, the people will actually be feeling that it, it was their own end. So, and here in virtual reality, the same thing can be applied. But instead of just having everything kind of physical, you can just have it in your headset. So, it's quite powerful. It's quite a powerful tool. And obviously, this, uh, this platform is made for gaming. And here at Cora, we are, unfortunately, we weren't the first ones to release the, the first Oculus uh, game, but uh, we, were the, um, we were one of the first Danish uh, company, uh, companies uh, releasing uh, a virtual reality game here. Um, and it's called City Escape Repairman. It's already out on Gear VRs if you have them, so just, yeah, you can just download it and, um, yeah. 
and Redis. Now, the last example that I want to show you, it's Google's expeditions. This is a project where Google, they just uh, um, went around like some schools with some cardboards and they enabled teachers to, uh, to show students, for example, the Great Wall of China or um, uh, Paris or uh, Romeo and, Juli and Juliet's house. And they were able to actually see like the, those places. And now I just want to, to, to hear like their reactions because it's pretty funny. Under the water. Okay, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? Where there's a shark. Whoa! 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 It allowed us to go somewhere we wouldn't normally be able to go. Oh, we in China. This is the Great Wall of China. We got to see the place itself so we could actually understand what she was talking about. How long would it take to walk the length of the Great Wall of China? How much more enriching than just showing them a picture or just having them read about it? This device can actually make us go to places that we've never been before. It brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see so you know that it's never going to end. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, here at Coral, we believe that gamified experiences also en enhance a lot of the motivation of, the, of students to learn and the ability of them to memorize things. So we're also working a lot on, um, on some educational uh, apps, especially in, uh, in maths and, um, and chemistry. And we believe that it's going to revolutionize education. Now, for our final remarks, um, the, this is a picture of that wall over there, actually. <laughs> While we are here, um, we challenge, uh, when we have workshops with, uh, with kids here, we actually encourage them to think of how can virtual reality uh, be used in their daily lives, and how can virtual reality uh, enhance their parents' jobs. So now I'm going to make this challenge to you guys. So how can this actually affect your life and can enhance uh, your, uh, it can change your, your, your reality? And if you want to, and to just share your ideas, you are more than welcome to write them here in, uh, in this wall. And... Uh, I just want to leave you with uh, one last thing. This was um, a phrase from, uh, from Confucius, which is, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. And I do is actually what virtual reality can enable you guys to do. So thank you very much. <laughs>